Okay, so now as you can see, we set up a, a little more complicated setup. Um, let's uh, imagine that this is actually almost exactly how one of my shows actually is set up. Uh, I actually have three screens. One is in the very back and two are at a diagonal. Uh, when I first started doing this, I would use three individual projectors. Uh, but in some of the cases, I've been using just one projector to do all three screens. Um, so I'm going to show you how that's possible. Obviously, remember that I am using this on a very tiny scale. My projector is way too big for this room, so it's overshooting all of this. Uh, but you can get the idea exactly how it's done. So the quality of the images may not be what you would get in real life, but you can understand exactly how it's possible. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to make some multiple surfaces on this fake little stage that I've created here for you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and delete all of these just uh, by clicking the little X's right there. Those will get rid of those surfaces. Uh, new display with the Epson projector. Uh, if that's too big, you can go down here and go to 33%. Okay, we're going to label this as center back wall. All right. Oh, way too bright and blinding me in the mirror. Okay. So now, instead of doing the constraints as we did before, I'm going to show you how to do something even, even cooler. And I'm going to have to bring those in because we're not going to be able to do that properly from that distance because the projector is too low. That's close enough. Uh, the reason we're not lighting up the bottom of this right here is because my projector is lower than my little fake stage right here. That would never happen in the show. Your projector would always be above the stage looking down, not underneath the audience, clearly. But that's why I'm getting, this is creating a shadow onto that one right there. Uh, but to give you an example, um, we're not going to uh, constrain it because you're never going to be able to get that constrained uh, properly. Um, you could get it close which would look something like this. And it may not cause a big issue for you if behind your screens is a black curtain where you don't notice the, uh, the projections. And then that may work just fine for you. Uh, however, if you're trying to project good quality images and not distort them or cut them off by accident, uh, obviously you're gonna be missing a lot of that up there as you can see. But if that was a back uh, black curtain, uh, you could do uh, just simple graphics like this. Let's get rid of all the audio. We don't need the audio there, so I'll level. And we could play three, and that'll play all the, ima the image across all three surfaces like that, which looks pretty damn cool. Um, but if you have a white surface back there or something else you don't want to you don't illuminate, you're going to see that on the back wall. And if you had a text or something you really needed to see, you're going to be overshooting it because there's no way to get that image to curve like that using uh, constraints. So let's go in here the way I was originally planning to show you, which is to go to the center back wall. And we're going to reset all the constraints by choosing constraints and then choosing reset constraints. So to show you, you're in grid constraints and you reset it, it pops way open just like that. Now this time, instead of using constraints, we're going to highlight these little corner tabs, these little pins right here. We're going to bring the pin down. I'm going to drag the pin exactly to where I want them. And we're going to only illuminate that part of the stage. Now this is something I do for every single one of my shows. Because of the type of routines that I perform in my show, this is something that I do every single performance, or every single venue, rather. Um, put that in that corner, and put that in that corner. And if you find it's too hard to line that up, uh, you can go in here and zoom in. And now your movements are going to be on a much uh, slower scale, as you can see now. I can move my mouse almost anywhere, and it just barely moves that which is exactly what I'm looking for. So now I'm pretty close to being lined up. Now you can see I've illuminated just the center screen. So that's the center back wall. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. And we're going to name this one left wall, which should be stage right. But uh, let's go to 100%. And uh, we're going to drag that this time over to there. Right about that. 
And we're going to drag this one over to there. That one to there. And as I said, because this bottom box that I have, my projector is too low, so I'm creating a shadow. So in this case, I'm going to bring this up just so it doesn't look bad, uh, so you don't get those weird diagonal images as you just had there recently. Uh, okay, that's the left wall. Let's copy this center one again, because it's easier. And we're going to drag this one right there kind of like just drawing with light. It's really cool. That one there. And that one there. Now I'll show you a great trick later when we get into the remote option of QLab and show you how you do not need to even be at your computer screen to do this. Oh yeah, that is so cool. When I first started doing this, I had to be backstage uh, or very far up in the booth in the front of the house going, which direction do I go? Because I couldn't see it. And uh, when QLab came out with the remote system, it allowed me to do this remotely in the perfect view that I needed while walking around the audience to get that image perfect. Okay, and this is the right screen. Now, let's do a brand new one. Whoopsies, not that one. I'm going to attach it to the, this projector. There we go. Bottom screen. So in most cases, I would have a screen up here, a long skinny screen, where I put names or something like that I wanted to use. What has actually happened is I'm using their projection screen from the theater, but I'm only having them bring it down about a quarter of the way. And we put a piece of a mark on the wall and we say, look, at this part of the show, bring the screen down to this point and stop. And it allows me to create a whole new visual screen on stage. Um, you know what? I'm going to delete that. Make it faster. There we go. Um, bottom screen. Okay. And uh, let's try the constraints with this one. We could, we should be pretty damn close. We don't need to do the uh, corner pinning. Because moving the constraints obviously is much faster. Uh, yeah, we're pretty doggone close. Cool, right there. And you can see how much better it looks, obviously, when you're using a white surface compared to a, <laughs> a brown <laughs> drawer. <laughs> hey, I'm working with what I had to deal with here. And uh, let's go to the left-hand side. Cool. And it says right here, bottom screen, so you know exactly what it is. Uh, the actual pixel ratio that you're actually uh, projecting is 446 by 255. The actual projector is 1280. So you see we're getting a very small amount of the actual uh, pixels there. That's just why it's so low quality. But this wouldn't be the case when you do it on a large surface with proper quality HDMI screens and not overshooting your entire backdrop. All right, so let's move the tri-section video. Uh, to that bottom screen, and we can get rid of that. And now how cool does that look, right? Now if you didn't like that little bar on the bottom, it's very easy. While the video is actually playing, you can go here to the bottom screen, you can choose grid, and you can say, look it, I don't want to light up the bottom, I want to bring it up just like that. And you've adjusted it. Uh, you could bring the top up a little bit more if you wanted to, to get a better in between those two. And uh, turn the grid off. And then when I restart that video, it fits just perfectly without lighting up that bottom trim right there like that. Uh, so now while that's playing, we can choose to, uh, what else can we do? We can do a... Um, Oh, let's put a dancer. Let's put a dancer in the uh, center back wall. And to do that, we're just going to fire that one. And you should have... Yep, yeah, there she is. Oh, she's very tiny. And we're going to raise her up like that. And there she is. That's our dancer. Um, and if you want to put a uh, object behind her, 
you could let's see we could put another video uh, let's do golden stage behind uh, the whoops no I want the center back wall full screen and we're gonna uh, change the layer to um, you know 998 we're gonna go two down below so hopefully it fires behind her not in front of her and there you go now she has that beautiful image um, right behind her like that and of course we can then um, take the this other diamond light graphic put on the left and we can copy that and paste that and put another one on the right and make sure both of those are looping infinite loop and now if I fire that one that's gonna be on the left and the diamond lights is gonna be on the right and how cool is that um, I think our golden stage has ended so I did not put a loop let's put infinite loop on that one and now you have a fully um, projection mapped with a bottom screen a left screen a right screen and a center screen with an alpha channel girl on front and if I wanted to move uh, her down to the bottom as well let's find out where she went uh, here her name is Jenna uh, let's put her down on the bottom screen and doo -doo, doo -doo. And let's go ahead and fire the um, trisection video again. And this time we're going to put Jenna on the bottom screen as well. Oh, this is not an alpha channel? No, it has to be. There he is. Okay. I was confused. Um, yeah. And so now that's what we have just like that. Uh, multiple layers, multiple angles, different corner pinning. Uh, I can put a live camera there if I want. I can play one at a time. I can duplicate them. You can do whatever you want. The fact is you've just learned how to projection map on multiple surfaces at any angle. Now, the reason that angles is so beneficial for me is that I was finding I was standing in the center of the um, stage uh, and I was blocking my projector a lot of the times. So by moving my projector to the left, on the stage floor, I use this projector sometimes, uh, on the left, about two or three feet, I could just corner pin that map and tweak it onto the set, and I'm still hitting the center screen perfectly, even though it's way at an angle, and it just looks fantastic. I can go in the center of the stage, not worry about ever blocking that projection screen, and it works out phenomenally. So I hope this gave you a very cool um, concept of how you can do video mapping, and we're going to show you a few more things coming up right now.